Hello and welcome back to the guy for Botania. Today we'll be going over the different mana generating flowers you can make and how they generate mana. So let's hop right into it. The Entropinium generates mana from explosions. To make it, you'll need two red petals or mushrooms, two gray petals or mushrooms, two white petals or mushrooms, a rune of wrath, and a rune of fire into a petal apothecary. This flower will generate mana from TNT explosions. Now, it will specifically do TNT explosions and not any explosion. So don't try to keep creepers around because they will blow up your flower and your mana spreader and if it's close enough, your mana pool as well. But you'd also need to be careful with your TNT explosions because as you can see, my flower is still pretty full on mana as it is shifting over to the mana spreader. If there is any mana in here, the flower will get blown up. As you can see, there is no more mana in the flower. So let me go and set another one off. After we wait, and it absorbs all the mana to be shifted over to the mana pool. You do need to be careful, because if we do it, let's say now, as you can see, it's still not fully out of mana, and I'm going to regret this, and I regretted it. Yeah, that what happens if you don't wait. The Thermal Lily generates mana from lava. To make it, you'll need two orange petals or mushrooms, one red petal or mushroom, one rune of fire, and one rune of earth into a petal apothecary. When you take, I say a lava bucket, and I'll place it next to my Thermal Lily. It consumes it, and it will generate mana. Now, as you can see, it is keep going up and down, up and down, as it's generating one bucket of lava will produce constant mana for 45 seconds. So this thing will just continually shoot mana into this pool for 45 seconds after it consumes the lava. But there is an important thing to note is that after it's done, there is a five minute cooldown until it can generate mana again. If you give it lava, that will decrease the cooldown but it will still not generate mana. So though this generates a lot of mana, it will also take a while before you can give it more. And as you can see, it is done, and you can see that it is actually smoking. This is because it is currently in its cooldown phase, and you can see it actually hasn't really produced that much mana. In the terms of a whole pool, but get a couple of these going, you can get a lot done. The Rosa Arcana generates mana from experience. To make it, you'll need two purple petals or mushrooms, two pink petals or mushrooms, one lime petal or mushroom, and one rune of mana into a petal apothecary. Now, this flower will generate mana from experience orbs that fall near it. So let's get rid of you, get rid of you, and get rid of you. As you can see, they don't really drop mana but I now have mana in my pool. So, as I said, if I put maybe a couple more cows in here, it'll go around, it'll do damage to them over time. And as they get close, oop, okay, maybe they're not as close as I thought they were. There we go. And as they die, the Rose Arcanus, if it's within range, again, it is a very small range, as you can see. They will go into the mana pool, in, go into the mana spreader, into the mana pool. If you have mob farms, you can have a couple of these set up at the bottom to pick up any experience that drops and turn it into mana. The Narslimus generates mana from slimes. To make it, you will need two lime petals or mushrooms, two green petals or mushrooms, one black petal or mushroom, one rune of water, and one rune of summer into the petal apothecary. I believe this flower is supposed to stop slimes from spawning and will generate mana from that. But I have been unable to recreate it here in my flat world or when I go to a actual world, find a swamp, place a bunch of these down, and just wait for slimes to spawn. None do spawn, but Again, I'm also not generating mana. I've tried throwing slime balls, slime blocks, anything I could think of that involves slime, 
but none of it seems to work. So I cannot accurately say in 1.15.2 how this generates mana, but everything I read is that it's supposed to stop the spawn of slimes and generate mana. So due to that unreliable nature, I can't really recommend using this flower, but if you get it working and you generate a lot of mana from it, more power to you. The munch dude generates mana from leaves. To make it, you need two lime petals or mushrooms, two red petals or mushrooms, one green petal or mushroom, one rune of gluttony into a petal apothecary. The flower will generate mana by consuming leaves off nearby trees, but it will not drop saplings or other items. So let me take my bone meal, grow this tree up, and as you can see, that the leaves are being eaten, and there are no drops coming from it. It's being consumed by the munch dew, put into the mana spreader into the mana pool. So you can't just have this go on collect the saplings and replant them you actually have another way you actually need another way to get the saplings now after it is done consuming all the mana well all of the leaves from a tree there will be a digestion period in between uses that depending on how many leaves it consumes can last for up to a minute but let's take this tree down put a new one down grow some saplings and as you can see it's not doing it just yet because we are still in the digestion period. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. It is slightly a little bit harder to automate due to this, but you can still easily do it. And depending on how big the tree could be, you could might as well just let them naturally grow and the munch dew will just eat it eventually. So you don't need extra bone meal. The Gomerilis generates mana from food. To make it, you will need two light gray petals or mushrooms, two yellow petals or mushrooms, one red petal or mushroom, one rune of fire, and one rune of summer into a petal apothecary. This flower will generate mana based off the hunger values of food. So you can see I have some cod in my inventory, we'll give it one of that. It eats it right up, and then it will generate mana. So I can also, let's give it an apple, we'll eat the apple. Then when it's done, let's toss it a carrot, some chicken, steak, and you know what? Steak has some high value, so we'll just give it steak. Now, as you can see, I threw a bunch of steak in, but it's not necessarily eating it. In between it, there is a digestion period similar to the munch do. And any food you give it, it will take, but it might not necessarily turn it into mana. Also, you need to give this a varied diet. Because if I just, for instance, give it a bunch of bread, the amount of mana the bread will generate over time will decrease and decrease. But if I, again, mix it up with maybe some cod, bread, apples, steaks, chicken, carrots, baked potatoes, as long as they have different names and values and data values, they will count as different foods. So don't just rely on, you know, a giant base potato farm and boom, you have infinite mana. You have to vary it up with other types of food to get the most out of this flower as you can. Now you have all you need to continue your journey through Botania. That is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and, sub and subscribe for more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video. Thank you all for watching and have a good day. Bye.